Rebirth of the Malicious Empress of Military Lineage, Chapter 182, Bestowing Marriage Consort Zhu Xian smiled prettily and asked, Why is older sister not entering? Could it be that one had done something wrong and is currently kneeling and asking his majesty for forgiveness? Why not this younger sister go in and intercede for older sister? The empress gritted her teeth, no need. When the court was fighting, it would often implicate the females in the inner palace. Prince Shu's clique and the crown prince's clique had always competed against one another as this did not only represent the throne but also the people behind them. If the crown prince collapsed then how long could the empress sit in that position? There would be a day when Emperor Wen Hua would get old and if Prince Shu sat on the dragon throne, what kind of ending would the empress have? In ordinary officials courtyard, there would be a number of dirty means and it was even worse in the inner palace as one's carelessness would cause one to lose their life and implicate one's family. How would one not live life carefully? Consort Zhu Xian laughed, if older sister is not willing then younger sister would not be forceful. However younger sister still has things to say to his majesty and would not bother older sister's interest. She covered the smile on before instructing someone to report to Emperor Wen Hu. The Empress only hated that she was unable to disfigure Consort Zhu Xian's face. The Empress had almost guessed what Consort Zhu Xian would have said when she went in now. It was nothing more than lighting a flame, fanning it and adding fuel into the fire. Emperor Wen Hu always listened to Consort Zhu Xian's words thus one feared that the anger towards the crown run would only increase to another level. However, she was unable to obstruct Consort Zhu Xian. Just as Consort Zhu Xian was about to enter, someone ran in from outside in a rush. Upon seeing Consort Zhu Xian, he said regretfully, Your ladyship Consort Zhu Xian, his Highness Prince Ruai is currently outside, requesting to see His Majesty. Prince Ruai, Consort Zhu Xian and the Empress were startled at the same time. Why did Prince Ruai come here at this time? Although Consort Zhu Xian was arrogant normally, she was not unclear about the importance of things. Those arrogances were just little tantrums that were thrown towards Emperor Wen Hu and she would not dare to be careless on big matters, thus she immediately said, then I will come over later. The Empress was a few years older than Consort Zhu Xian and saw more matters of the court thus her heart sank. Prince Ruai did not come earlier or later but just at the time when something happened to the Crown Prince and only after Emperor Wen Hua had handed out the conviction decree of the Crown Prince. One feared that his purpose in coming was ill-intended. He had a relaxed expression even with the half-silver mask on and the Empress felt a little shameful. As the Empress of a country, she let an outsider see her in an embarrassing condition. Consort Zhu Xian however had a worried expression on. Some people were born uniquely that even though their appearance might be ordinary, their air of nobility and elegance was able to make others admire from the heart. It was as if by just standing there, others' eyes would not be able to keep away from him. Prince Ruai walked past the Empress and only gave her a glance without much meaning to it and his footsteps did not stop at all, as if he had not seen the scene of the mother of a country knelling in front of the hall. However this was not because he empathized with the Empress. Even though Prince Ruai did not show any expression, the Empress felt that the other party was too lazy to look and the disdain and contempt came from the bottom of his heart. She felt exceptionally embarrassed. In the imperial study, Emperor Wen Hua was sitting in front of the table. He had a light and flowing appearance but was firm and steady, as if the person who was previously flying into a rage was not him. It was just that his back was somewhat stiff. The purple-clad youth walked in from outside and lazily and called out Your Majesty before directly sat down opposite him, taking it as a greeting. He sat down very casually, as if Emperor Wen Hua was the guest and there were no traces of respect or worship. Like that. It made Emperor Wen Hua feel that it was as he was worth nothing in front of this not very old person. That thought only appeared for a very short moment before Emperor Wen Hua recovered to his senses and smiled as he looked at Prince Ruai with a smile. These days Zen is very busy and did not have the opportunity to ask Prince Ruai if living here is alright. There were some sense of wanting to be close in those words. Now that the Ken country had a bad attitude towards Ming Chi, if Great Liang have any other intentions at this time, 
Ming Chi would not have any way to retreat. Thus Emperor Wen Hua did not want to be on too bad terms with Ming Chi, even if he had to be soft or lower his head, as long as the current situation has passed, other matters could be discussed in the future. So he was in a hurry to please Prince Ruai. If the common people of Ming Chi saw Emperor Wen Hua's current appearance, one feared that they would be scornful. Prince Ruai smiled lazily and said, with your majesty blessing, this prince is living rather well. However, one heard that your majesty is not in a good situation these days. Emperor Wen Hua's heart jumped but on the surface, it was barely noticeable. He only shook his head and smiled bitterly. One had not been able to teach one's son well and have let Prince Ruai see a joke. One cannot blame your majesty. Prince Ruai said, since your majesty has nine sons. One was unable to hear happiness or anger in his voice. However the Qin Emperor is truly pitiful. This trip to Ming Qi, the Crown Prince and Princess Ming and lost their lives. It is really a disaster. Emperor Wen Hua's smile had become somewhat awkward. Prince Ru I was not wrong with his words. The Qin Emperor had kept on requesting the Crown Prince to pay with his life and although that was because of achieving equilibrium but there was another reason. Two countries came to the tribute event but Prince Ru I of Great Liang did not have a single injury but both the Crown Prince and Princess of Qin country were dead. What was with this? Was it Ming Chi who deliberately went against Qin country? Or was this subtly indicating that Qin country's power was low and could not protect a crown prince and princess? In any case, this was a matter that made the Qin country feel a loss of face and the Qin emperor was furious about this. So even if the crown prince loses his life, in addition of the vanity of a monarch, the Qin emperor would hate Ming Chi for a while, he said. Zen is also handling this matter as quickly as possible. Prince Ruai smiled, the Qin Emperor will not give up on the matter easily. Emperor Wen Hua's breath was stuck in his chest. He had spoken in a soft manner and during the conversation, he had done his best not to talk about this topic but one did not know why this Prince Ruai did not understand and purposely use this topic to block heart and each sentence said was merciless. Emperor Wen Hua naturally would not think that Prince Ruai was so stupid that he could not be able to understand the situation so that meant that Prince Ruai did it deliberately to disgust him. Emperor Wen Hua wanted to leave with a wave of his sleeves like he usually did with the officials that did not listen to him or just fly in to a terrible rage but Prince Ruai was not his officials and even though he was a prince of first rank, in some ways, he was more powerful and fiercer than him. This emperor, Emperor Wen Hua could only rigidly ask, one do not know why does Prince Ruai come to look for Zen today? Prince Ruai did not speak and only used his finger to point at his desk before knocking on it. In a blanket of silence, Emperor Wen Hua's heart was grabbed by that knocking sound. He suddenly thought that could it be that Prince Ruai chose this time to come because there were important things to talk to him? If Prince Ruai mentioned about the border cities between Great Liang and Meng Chi, how would Emperor Wen Hua refuse it? His back which was initially stiff, broke into a cold sweat. The other party was this silent but it had given him the heaviest feelings. After a while, the finger that Prince Ruai was using to knock paused and he said carelessly, it is because of this prince's lifelong event. What? Upon hearing these words, Emperor Wen Hu instinctively hesitated and before he could understand it, he heard Prince Ruai's calm voice. Imperial older brother had always hoped that this prince would quickly form a family as early as possible and had urged this prince that upon coming to Ming Chi to bring a prince consort back. This prince also has such intention. This time Emperor Wen Hu understood. Prince Ruai wanted to find a woman in Ming Chi, but why? Emperor Wen Hu felt somewhat strange in his heart and guessed that there was some conspiracy to it but he could not express as such. At that moment a magnanimous smile appeared on his face, so it is as such. It is of no matter. Even heroes have a weakness for the charms of a beautiful woman. Prince Ruai is young and handsome naturally deserving of a beautiful female. It is just that one does not know which family's young lady did Prince Ruai take a fancy to. Prince Ruai stared at him and the pair of peach blossoms eyes had some smile in it. Emperor Wen Hua was startled when he heard that youth speak. 
Shen Miao of the Shen family. Emperor Wen Hua could no longer smile. His heart was trembling in anger and could not wait to drag Prince Ruai out to be beheaded but he could not do so. But he finally could not keep the friendly smile on his face and his expression was exceptionally stiff. He asked in a hoarse voice, Who, did you say? The day daughter of the formidable Grand General. Prince Ruai said, your majesty do not remember? Didn't the crown prince want to marry her as a secondary consort a few days back? He actually pressed others like this. This was going too far in bullying. A number of thoughts pop into Emperor Wen Hua's mind in an instant but at the end he could not control his sneer. This prince Ruai looked lazy and scattered not taking anything in mind. The alliance between Ming Chi and Qin country did not enter his eyes and would only do his own stuff every day but he was a tiger that pretended to be a pig. His moves were at the back. Once he thought, it was marrying that a daughter of the formidable Grand General. Was he marrying Shen Miao or the military power of the Shen family? Emperor Wen Hua knew that from Great Liang's point of view, the Shen family's military power was not anything big and Great Liang already had a number of outstanding generals. However from Ming Chi's point of view, most of the outstanding generals had been dismissed by him in the early years and now even the Z family was in decline thus only the Shen family could support Ming Chi. A Ming Chi without the Shen family was like a tiger without its claws and to deal with Great Liang after that. One feared that there would not be a struggle before one was eaten cleanly. What a good Prince Ruai, what a good Great Liang. Emperor Wen Hua could barely squeeze out a smile, Prince Ruai really have a good eye. However General Shen loves his daughter and this is something that everyone knows. If Prince Ruai insist on marrying Shen Miao, one fear that General Shen would feel distress for his daughter and not be willing to marry her far off to Great Liang. How difficult can this be? Prince Ruai played with the thumb ring on his finger and said carelessly, Since General Shen is not willing then can't your majesty just decree it? Emperor Wen Hua was startled. Prince Ruai's words continued to flow into his ears. Great Liang and Ming Chi are still considered friendly now so your majesty is not willing to give this prince even this personal favor? He stretched his waist lazily and said, so since this is the case then this prince should report to imperial older brother about the matter of the border cities. Emperor Wen Hua had lived for so long and finally understood the feeling of being angry till one's entire body tremble. The Shen family was a piece of fatty meat and not only Prince Ruai wanted to snatch this piece of fatty meat, he wanted the owner to serve it up with both hands. If he really decreed it, one feared that even if Shen Xin stayed in Ming Chi due to his loyalty, there would be grievances in his heart as it was he who decreed for Shen Miao to be married afar. However if he was not willing to decree it, Emperor Wen Hua looked at the male opposite. As he was wearing a mask, one was unable to see clearly his expression but one had always felt that under this lazy and sloppy appearance, he had extremely power means and tactics. It was not wise to go against Great Liang when Ming Chi and Ken Country Alliance was in jeopardy. Prince Ruai had given him a difficult problem and there was no answer to it because every single answer was wrong. It would be him that would be in a disadvantage. That male's gaze landed on Emperor Wen Hua, just like a cat playing with the mouse that was caught, asking slowly and lazily. Did your majesty think about it? Emperor Wen Hua was so furious. Since he was enthroned, he had dealt with countless of tricky matters and there was not once that it was as frustrating as it was now. No one dared to be so rude and arrogant towards him. For the first time in his life, Emperor Wen Hua began to regret that he should not have dealt with the big clan family's military power. If Ming Chi had another few general like Shen Xin, was it that he would not need to be humble and servile in front of Great Liang? But how would there be medication for regret in the world? When Prince Ruai saw that he did not reply, he smiled and stood up. This prince understood. Then he turned around to leave. Wait. Emperor Wen Hua stopped him. Prince Ruai stood still and smiled. Your majesty better think it through. The monarch of a country's word is as heavy as nine tripods. Ming Chi and Great Liang have good relations and naturally Zan would assist in a virtuous purpose. Emperor Wen Hua was smiling uglier than crying as he said, 
If the young lady of the Shen family marries to Prince Ruai, it is the good fortune of the young lady of the Shen family and Zen is happy to see through it. Don't worry, Zen will write the decree today and announce it in a few days time in court. After pausing, he then spit out difficultly, the matter of the border cities. Take that as the gifts for your majesty. Prince Ruai smiled and left in a good mood. After Prince Ruai departed, Emperor Wen Hui became paralyzed in his seat and sweat was forming on his forehead and his face was totally extremely red. Anger, shame, humiliation and resentment were all intertwined on his face. However he was unable to change anything at all. This was perhaps the most unbearable thing in the world. He was obviously a monarch of a country but he could not help but admit his incompetence. Zhao Gong Gong, who was standing at the side dared not even breathe out deeply. Upon seeing the emperor being forced into such a situation, as a servant, he was naturally terrified. Bring the paper to Zen. Emperor Wen Hua suddenly said after a while. Zhao Gong Gong quickly complied. Emperor Wen Hua's gaze was heavy. Although Prince Ruai said that the matter of the border cities would not be mentioned for the time being, it was the temporary peace that was exchanged by the Shen family's marriage. However no one knew how long would the temporary peace last. The most important point was that after Shen Miao married Prince Ruai, although Shen Xin was still Ming Qi's people but Emperor Wen Hua would no longer dared to trust Shen Xin. Although previously he was suppressing Shen Xin, it was due to the fear that Shen Xin's achievements would supersede the masters but for generations the formidable Grand General was faithful so Emperor Wen Hua was still very trustful of Shen Xin's loyalty. However with his daughter in Great Liang, if Great Liang want to use Shen Mi out to leverage on Shen Xin, who would know what would Shen Xin do? This Shen Xin chess piece was considered to be discarded and the situation in Ming Qi would only be in more difficulty. In order to guard against Great Liang, Ming Qi had to quickly resume the ally relationship with Qin country. With two countries working together, there would be a chance to push back. The Qin country was still furious with Huang Fu Hao's and Princess Ming and's matters so Ming Qi had to show sincerity. The crown prince must die. Emperor Wen Hua closed his eyes. To everyone's surprise, the conviction decree of the crown prince that Emperor Wen Hua handed out was so fast that it gave no time for others to think clearly. The crown prince then committed suicide in the prisons. Whether it was suicide or not, from the eyes of those that could see clearly, it was all to protect the name of the crown prince. One could not let a crown prince to be beheaded in front of everyone like an average prisoner, moreover it was a crime of assassination a crown prince of another country. If this was the case then on the next day, the majesty of the imperial family would have disappeared. The common people were easy to fool but official families knew of the dark ways. Who would know if the crown prince really committed suicide? The imperial family always liked to give itself a good appearance but one feared that its body was the dirtiest. When the news of the crown prince's suicide had spread, the empress disputed it and afterwards fell seriously ill that she was unable to leave Kunning Palace so that she could properly recover. The concubines in the inner palace all felt at risk. How would the empress be seriously ill? It was because that the crown prince was gone and the empress do not have pillar to rely on in her later part of her lifetime thus one was not able to say that this position was stable. The empress was heartbroken due to the loss of his beloved son and one fear that she would hate him. Emperor Wen Hua thus Emperor Wen Hua would naturally be on guard against. They could only know themselves if she could not leave because she was seriously sick or was under house arrest. If the Empress fell from power, who would be the next master of the six palaces? Looking around, it was still Consort Zhu Xian that had the highest chance of winning and Emperor Wen Hua favored Consort Zhu Xian. Consort Zhu Xian still had two princes and even though Prince Zhu and Prince Jing had been fighting to the death with Prince Li's clique, Prince Li did not have a favored consort mother. For Prince Zhu and Prince Jing, the time, geographical and social conditions were favorable. Therefore the concubines were all living carefully. At this juncture, one must not let others have leverage against oneself and if one was accidentally caught and used as a spear, 
that it would not be good with regards to Huang Fu Hao's matter, other than the crown prince and the empress being implicated, all the other implicated people were also affected. The worst one was the residence of the Minister of Land. That day it was the, the young master Wang of the residence of the Minister of Land that proposed to appreciate incense and even brought his wife along, who knew that Huang Fu Hao would stain Yifeng Pavilion with blood. Wang Bai and Shen Dongling definitely could not escape. But the thing that decided their crimes was not this. The Minister of Land had been secretly involved in the business of illegal trading of salt. The illegal trade of salt was a heavy crime that the entire Wang residence would be implicated. Wang Bai and Shen Dongling were sentenced to be beheaded. The rest of the men in the Wang family were exiled while the females were sent to the border as army servants. Those discerning people who saw Emperor Wen Hua's move, saw that he was very furious as if he had been provoked and was deliberately venting one's anger. However an emperor's mind was always been unpredictable, even though the officials were suspicious, they could only take action as ordered. As Shen Miao was listening to Jing's on the happenings over these past few days, she was drinking tea. Lu Tan, who was beside, could not stop popping the snowflake candy in her mouth. The snowflake candy was brought over by Kong Ying. He mentioned that it was made by Great Liang's famous pastries chef and in the entire land under the skies, only the imperial family of Great Liang could eat it. Shen Miao did not notice it but it was discovered by Lu Tan. Lu Tan was pleasantly surprised when she ate it the first time and asked Shen Miao where did she buy it. Shen Miao only answered without thinking the matter through. The troubles that are caused by matter of the crown prince of Qin are really not small. Lu Tan spoke as she ate. So many people are buried with him. It is not enough to exchange it for a crown prince. When she spoke till the end, her voice was very soft, as if she feared that there were ears in the wall. Shen Miao smiled slightly but was not surprised. However her heart was shocked by Emperor Wen Hua's viciousness. It was indeed that with such a father there would be such a son. That year in order for Fu Ziyu Yi to eradicate the Shen family and not leave any future troubles, he did not spare any thoughts about Fu Ming's and Wan Yu's life or death. At that time she thought how would there be such a ruthless person in the world. Now it seemed that Fu Ziyu Yi's actions were exactly the same as Emperor Wen Hua's. In the eyes of their Fu family, whether it be family, love or friendships were all not reliable. Only the power of the country was the one thing to be pursued in their life. In order to stabilize this position, it was nothing much to sacrifice a son. Anyways there were still other women who could give birth for them. This was most likely the unrighteousness that was deeply carved in the Fu family's bones. Lu Tan saw that there was only a small amount of snowflake candy left on the plate and started counting with her fingers. Gu Mu and Gu Fu had eaten it. Older Biao brother has also eaten it. Only older brother Ling have yet to try it. These little bit will be kept for older brother Ling alright? She looked towards Shen Miao. Shen Miao naturally would not be calculative because of some food and nodded her head. Translator, oh, I know of a purple calculative smoke that will hear of this soon. It would be great if you can remember where you bought this snowflake candy. Lu Tan sighed and said in a pity, I have eaten all the snacks in Zhao Chun City and had tried almost all the snacks in Ding Capital but it is one's first time eating such yummy snowflake candy. Even though you cannot remember, I plan to personally send people to search for it tomorrow. One must find this shop. Shen Miao kept quiet. This was made by the Imperial Kitchens of Great Liang so even if Lu Tan turned the entire Ding Capital over, one feared that she would not be able to find this shop. Shen Miao was somewhat regretful that she should have mentioned it was a small stall and not a shop. Lu Tan sighed again, older brother Ling also likes to eat snacks and would definitely like this. After speaking, she seemed to have thought about something and said, but these days older brother Ling is somewhat strange. Shen Miao asked, what happened? The main concern daily was not on this. Thus she really did not know what changes there are with Lu Ling. Other than going to the Ministry of Defense, he would not go out upon returning to the residence and just practice martial arts in the courtyard. Lu Ling placed her hand under her chin to support as she spoke. In the past, older brother would not be that harsh on himself. Moreover these days when I talk to him, he would be low-spirited, 
as if he had suffered a setback. Lu Tang looked towards Shen Miao, youngest Biao's sister, you are smart, do you know what happened to him? Shen Miao said, I do not following around him all the time so how would I be able to know what he is thinking? Seeing Lu Tan's worried look, she comforted her, don't worry about it. Most likely it is because the end of the year is coming and it is about to be the busy time in the military. It will be fine after some time. Lu Tan nodded her head. Just as they were speaking, they saw Shen Kaiyu and Lu Ling walking in one after another. Seeing both of them were both in the main hall, Lu Tan greeted, older Biao brother, older brother Ling come over to eat snowflake candy. Lu Ling entered the room and first looked at Shen Miao. Shen Miao smiled gently at Shen Kaiyu and his eyes could not help but dimmed as he walked to the side to sit down. Shen Kaiyu unrestrainedly grabbed a piece of the snowflake candy to pop it in his mouth and asked, How is it both of you have such leisure time today? Lu Tan laughed as she joked with Shen Kaiyu when they heard the servant outside reporting that Shen Xin and Lu Zhu Yan had returned. Shen Kaiyu said, just at the right time, father and mother has returned. We should have our meal. Shen Xin and Lu Zhu Yan walked in but this time even the most outgoing Lu Tan also noticed that something was wrong. Shen Xin's face was pale and he had an ugly expression on whereas Lu Zhu Yin seemed to be very angry. Normally even if there were troublesome matters outside, Shen Xin and wife would not show such expression in front of their children. Moreover both of them were open-minded people and there were little matter that could anger them. However today, they were obviously very angry. The servants that were following Shen Xin and Lu Zhu Yan dared not even breath as they lowered their head to withdraw. Lu Tan and Lu Ling were relatives thus even though they had doubts in their mind, it was difficult for them to ask. Shen Kaiyu wanted to ask but seeing his father putting on an expression of killing whoever that asked, he hesitated and dared not open his mouth. At the end it was Shen Miao who took the initiative to speak. She looked at Shen Xin and Lu Zhu Yan and smiled as she spoke. Why is father and mother looking unhappy? Is it that there is something wrong outside? When Shen Miao spoke, Shen Xin and Lu Zhu Yan looked over at Shen Miao at the same time. Shen Xin's gaze was filled with a complex mix of remorse anger and grievances while Lu Zhu Yan had a deeply guilty and helplessness in her eyes. Shen Miao's heart sank but she very quickly understood that for Shen Xin and wife to display such an expression, one feared that this matter is related to her. Lu Zhu Yan took a deep breath and smiled, it is nothing, it just that there are some matters in court. Zhao Zhao is hungry right? Let's eat first. It was just that the smile was so forceful that even Lu Tan's eyes became solemn. Just what matter had become so serious that Shen Xin and wife who were not afraid of heavens and earth and were always outspoken would want to conceal? This matter had become so serious. Shen Miao did not speak and did not consent but just looked at Shen Xin and wife. With her attitude. She was obviously waiting for reasoning as she did not believe Lu Zhu Yan's explanation at all. Shen Kaiyu had a burst of shock as he seemed to have seen the Shen Miao a few years ago. At that time, Shen Miao was still arrogant and was not as close to them as she was now but instead was more intimate with the second and third household. Every time she wanted something from Shen Xin, she would stand in front of them and not speak a single word and was very stubborn about it. In fact, from the past till now, Shen Miao seemed to have changed a lot but there were some habits in her bones that had never changed. Shen Xin said, Zhao Zhao, be obedient. He was rarely that strict to Shen Miao. If he was that strict in the past, Shen Miao would have been in tears. Lu Ling looked at her somewhat worried. Shen Miao did not move and still had a bland expression on as she spoke. Why are father and mother not telling me the truth? If I cannot solve it at least share some of the worries. If I can solve it, wouldn't it be even better? To conceal the matter down would seem to be alienating one. I am not a child. I am like eldest brother, a member of the Shen family. Shen Xin's lips moved but he did not speak. Shen Xin looked at him with a pair of eyes as clear as a flowing stream. Under such gaze, it was impossible for others to speak nothing but the truth to her. She continued. Moreover isn't this matter related to me? Lu Zhu Yan was stunned as Lu Tan and Lu Ling looked strangely at Shen Miao, while Shen Kaiyu looked puzzled. When Shen Xin heard the words, 
He stared at Shen Miao for a while before finally sighing deeply and said with a bitter smile, Today during court, the emperor had passed a decree, bestowing marriage for you. He said with great difficulty, to Prince Ruai.